more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. All right, y'all, real quick. I see the vision of what your man Coach Carroll was talking about when he said he was visioning Big Nickel or a three safety set being in vogue for his team quite a bit. Bringing that cat Jamal Adams back, oh my God. Just in a few plays that I saw there, that can be a very explosive defense that can work against uh, a, a multitude of things. Now, think about this right here. Your three safety said you got that cat, Quandre Diggs out there. Quandre Diggs, one of the best doing it. Definitely love, my, love me some Quandre Diggs and his skill set as someone who loves safety play. Uh, you have Julian Love. A guy who can do some of the stuff that Quandre Diggs can do. He can do some of the stuff that Jamal Adams can do. He's a versatile cat like that. Former college cornerback and someone who's played nickel in his time there. Uh, a lot of things that you can do with him, especially if you creep him around the line of scrimmage right here like they're doing on this particular play. And then you have Jamal Adams. Think about this. A lot of people ranting and raving about the game that Devin Witherspoon had, but look at him. He started the game on the outside. All he did was move to Jamal Adams' spot and, do, and did what Jamal Adams usually does. Jamal Adams can definitely blitz with the best of them. He can definitely blitz if a quarterback isn't looking and get you a couple of sacks because he can get you a couple of sacks when the quarterback is looking or when the offensive lineman is there to try to combat him from getting to the quarterback. He's very good in that manner right there. He can make those splash plays, tackles for losses, uh, he's a big hitter, and this is all stuff that you saw within the first few plays from Jamal Adams. That is something to behold right there. And then you bring back Bobby Wagner, and you have Jordan Brooks right next to him. Jordan Brooks playing damn good. Bobby Wagner still Bobby Wagner. And then you bring in Jaron Reed in front of them, playing like the Jaron Reed of old instead of an old Jaron Reed with Draymond Jones. And then Boye Mafe doing everything that I said he would do in the off season, right? When people were worried about new guys at edge, I'm like, well, what about Boye Mafe? He had some goofballs and what? Well, this new guy was a captain at his university. So was Boye Mafe, man. And he flashed as a rookie and he's playing damn good now. And Uchino Nwoso is that dude. That is a lineup for that ass right there. That's exactly how it should roll. Devin Witherspoon on the outside, Jamal Adams in the slot. That's essentially what he is right here is a slot defender. Right or a mid-level defender, slot defender. You can play him moving forward. You can play him reverse. He worked the shallow zone duty right there, cover the flat. You give him a lot of different shit to do, of course, right? Blitz, blitz, blitz. Do all that right there, a jack of all trades. And then you have a guy who can flip his skill set on the outside. That's hard, absolutely hard, cannot front in that manner right there. And we saw it on some of these plays. Uh, not this one right here. Your boy Jaren Reed getting off on this one right here. What? You know what I mean? Why is Jaren Reed stringing this along right here? Jaren Reed is the dude. Check this out. Wall, typewriter, parallel to the line of scrimmage, make the soul. Go back if you didn't see that right there. Jaren Reed on a multi-gap approach. Look at the parallel. Stand parallel to the line of scrimmage with the typewriter. MC Hammer style right there. Multi-gap approach. And look at him on, on a solo tackle right there. Jaren Reed with all those guys surrounding him. His defense has a chance to be damn good. Here you go again. Now, they're still in that same set. You still got your man walked out here into the mids. And he's walked out over the slot receiver. Right? Keeping him that close to the line of scrimmage. Of course, you know what he can do there. And he does that here. He just doesn't get the benefit of the quarterback's back being turned. Daniel Jones actually saw him and then spun off of him because, of course, he was able to anticipate the pressure coming, right, on that nickel fire. See Jamal coming off the edge right there. Before, well, I, have to, I would have to show you from this direction right here. Obviously, he's ID when they put they put the tight end in motion right here. He's looking over there, and he can see Jamal creeping. So at the very least, he knows to look that direction. You can see right there on the play action, he's looking right now, and he sees Jamal Adams coming. So that's a little bit different there, but had he not been looking, Jamal Adams would have had him a sack on this one. And it still goes down as a quarterback pressure at the very least right there, and they don't get a huge gainer out of it. But you can see him there doing his thing, right, causing havoc. And you kind of protect him as well. Not having him 
deep in coverage. And then when you need to do that, you just can put Julian Love back there with Quandre Diggs. Same deal right here. Your man out in no man's land, right? Right where your nickel backs would usually be. You see them reduce the alignment of the receiver. Him take shape right on that zone coverage and splock a tie out. Come on, man. If you didn't get out your seat when you saw that, that shit made me jump up. I don't even know why I was jumping up. I guess I'm just too used to football, man. Anytime there was a big hit and you played, you gave it or anything like that, you had to stand up and pledge to allegiance. Splock a tie out. Jesus, man. Come on. This was a handful of plays. He's already making impacts and big hits and quarterback pressures and all that. Head on the outside on this one right here. Drive through the target. You catch it right. It's like hitting cardboard, baby. Running through a cardboard box. And they jumped in the air. Looked like synchronized swimming. <laughs> jumped in the air with it and split. Tire. Fertilized that man and sent him to. Won't you send me to Zombie Town? Won't you send me to Zombie Town? All right, once again, post it up opposite a slot receiver here, and you can see him float with that zone. Unfortunate what happens here, but on uh, these other breaks, I can't stand when some Johnny Nobody is sitting in that damn bang, was sitting in that damn, uh, sitting on a damn phone somewhere, sitting on a damn Obama phone or something like that, talking about some dudes who are out there. Uh, with this gladiator sport right here, putting it all on the line. So, listen, obviously, you want to hit what you see. My man ducks his head right there. Pretty routine what everyone does these days, if you ask me. I hate the tackling form these days, but that could happen right there. You wouldn't expect somebody to come and hit you on the side of the head with a knee like George Masvidal and Ben Askren or whatever like that. But, hey, <laughs> here you go, man. He had a couple of tackles. Uh, pressure, right? Could have been a sack right there. All in one series. That was just one series. You don't think that he could have had a very similar game to your boy Devin Witherspoon in that game had he played an entire game at that position? So just imagine that with Devin Witherspoon and away from Tariq Woolen and with Bobby Wagner and by, in front of Quandre Diggs and next to Julian Love and behind Jaron Reed, Nuchino Nuosu, and Boye Mafe and Draymond Jones. Yeah, I think they're cooking with something right there. I can definitely see the vision on that one, man. You have to let me know what you think, though. You have people still saying, right, they want to see the fifth overall pick play in the slot uh, because of the game that he had versus the New York Giants, one of the worst offensive teams in the league. Uh, this next team that the Seattle Seahawks playing, the Cincinnati Bengals, one of the best offenses in the league. Uh, one of the offenses that's taking these guys to the Super Bowl and damn near back to the Super Bowl the following season. Uh, these these dudes can play some offensive football right there. So then got cats on the outside, Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. I want to see Devin Witherspoon definitely go against a Jamar Chase. That's how you make your money in this league right there. If you're able to play against that guy, dampen him, which not too many people have been able to do it. Man, then you're talking right there. But playing him in a slot when Jamal Adams can do all the same stuff, right? If Jamal Adams is healthy, obviously. If not healthy, then, yeah, I can see him playing in the slot, and that'd be cool. Um, just better not run up against some of these teams with these dope-ass outside receivers because I'm not so sure Trey Brown can match up with a Jamar Chase or an A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, uh, all these guys that you'll see on the outside there if you're talking about more some more of the elite teams. You know what I mean? So let me know what you think about that. All right, it's your boy, Jersey Murph, a.k.a. Mid-Atlantic Murph, signing off once again. I appreciate everybody out there, man. Let's go. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.